Dreams. For one couple, it's been a 28,000 kilometre journey, taking 17 months from the other side of the world. Here's Melissa Stokes. Imagine riding through this. This is what happens in minus 15 degrees in northern China. The 24-hour flight to England is enough for many of us. It started as a, a, like a, an immigration route, really, a bit of a slow one. Jodie and Tom's main form of transport to New Zealand, their bikes. We started uh, in May last year. Uh, 17 months, 28,000 kilometres from minus 25 degrees in China to the full force of a Middle Eastern summer. Spare a thought for Jody, who had to cover up for cultural reasons in Iran. Plus 45 <laughs> degrees um, in, the, in the desert, and so I was pretty toasty a lot of the time. The journey, all in the name of rugby. The Rugby World Cup was our carrot, really, yeah. and that was the thing that kept us driven to reach a certain place at a certain time. Starting in Old Blighty, through France, Eastern Europe, entering Turkey and Istanbul, there was a 6,000-kilometre trek across China, South Korea meeting John Kerwin in Japan, then whipping through Southeast Asia to Australia's outback, and finally, here. You wouldn't believe how many All Black fans out there. You've got 4.2 million here. There must be another 4.2 million scattered across West Asia. They yeah. love it, and it is often an inspiration of why rugby reached these areas. Along the way, they've collected jerseys and the spirit of global rugby, wanting to connect grassroots clubs around the world. We've learned how very much it's widespread, like a real, truly global sport. They still love the game. Their bikes? Well, that's another story. Melissa Stokes, One News. Great stuff. And when you talk about grassroots rugby clubs, Andrew's at one of them. So He's I've got a couple of guests here I want to talk to, because while most overseas rugby World Cup fans arrive in New Zealand by plane or by boat, of course, others have gone to exceptional lengths to be here. Well, two others, to be uh, frank. One couple have had a 28,000 kilometre journey from the other side of the world, and it's taken them 17 months because they've been on bicycles. Tom Hudson and Jodie Burton join us now. Guys, Hi. welcome from the UK. Who had the idea? Who, come on, who said to the other, <laughs> I've got a brilliant idea, we're going to cycle to New Zealand? Uh, Tom always blames me, actually. He always says that I'm the one to blame. I just suggested it and he agreed, so I think, you know, when we're, you we're doubly... When you suggested it, you think, oh, just He'll it. never say yes. No. <laughs> and Tom, you went... That's a great idea. <laughs> it was a combination between the Rugby World Cup being a carrot for me and Jodie's sort of, uh, I don't know, exploration sort of side coming out. And uh, yeah, she's had this sort of plan to cycle across the world ever since she's read books as a young yeah. girl. And yeah, uh, yeah with the, the rugby was irresistible. And you know, it was a, it was a route and a, and a means to an end, really, for us. Can you actually believe that you achieved this? Because when you set out, you must have thought, well, come on, we'll give it a shot. Uh, but we might have to sort of, you know, part the bikes on boats or planes and that sort of thing? Oh yeah, I mean we've had to get a few boats but definitely on, on the way down to Dover and a puncher on the first day and rain and <laughs> camping in the middle of a field, we didn't know where we were. I think we seriously had quite large doubts Sorry. whether we would make so you, it. So you got lost in the UK before you actually got out of the country. <laughs> we um, we well we're, we're going to talk about your route. I think we might be able to bring up a, some sort of a graphic which shows your route but just in, in a nutshell, as, as, as briefly as you can, where, where did you take yourselves? So it's 28 countries, so uh, yeah. through, through all of the Eastern Europe and uh, down through Istanbul, gateway to Asia, um, back up into Georgia, Azerbaijan, we went through Iran, Pakistan, across the whole of China, uh, Korea, Japan, Hong Kong, and then the entire uh, Southeast Asia, Australia, and then, and then uh, into the South Island. So this has taken you through every cultural barrier, every mm. climactic ba climate barrier. Yeah. I mean, how was it going through places like... Uh, um, Pakistan, for instance, that must have been a little bit um, intrepid. It was actually, I mean, they're some of the friendliest people that we've met there. Very, very hospitable, very open and friendly, but you do get sort of the police are so anxious because they don't want anything to happen to you, so they follow you and you're like, go away, you're making us look like we're someone that, you know, important and we're not. You're drawing attention to us, but <laughs> yeah. you did go uh, relatively close to a, an infamous uh, ex-resident, is that right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, quite infamous, Osama Bin Laden, uh, which brings us on to like uh, a rugby theme, obviously, is that we've been hooking up with rugby communities across the world. Um, and. Uh, um, Afghanistan have just themselves actually created their rugby union, so it just yeah. goes to show that rug rugby really is truly a global sport now. Yeah. Quite incredible. Now, just out of it, this wasn't just for your own personal um, sort of sense of adventure, was it? There, there has been a, a greater purpose to this. 
Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, we, we sort of said ourselves, and you, you questioned earlier, I mean, there's, there's probably been a hundred days that we would have chucked it in and thrown the, the bikes on the back of a truck if it wasn't for the uh, the charity projects. Mm. And uh, this is all about raising the awareness for, for global rugby communities and uh, to talk about the good work that the sport does and, you know, why we should, uh, as a Western society and Western cultures, yeah. you know, contribute embrace, and yeah. embrace it and help to develop it. Great right. idea. Um, how are you getting home? Are you cycling? Because you might be back in time for the next World Cup, or are you going to... We gonna... have had discussions about that, but no, Tom's, Tom's adamant he's going to sell the bike. <laughs> You're going to sell the bike, so there's no, there's no, there's no, there's no chance. <laughs> and I hear that the same tyres have done you all the way. Mine have, yeah. Yours 20, have. Yeah, get yeah. hold of that company and get some marketing <laughs> deal out of them. Jodie and Tom, thanks very much for joining us. Thank much. You. I'm sorry that we can't uh, be uh, giving you England in the final tomorrow, which would have been the <laughs> dream ticket, but I'm sure you'll enjoy the match regardless. You'll be going blacks. for all blacks. All blacks. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Many Thank congratulations. You. Thank you. you can